27 skinning method tutorial part one. This is our player model for Urban Terror called Sarah and I've been working on her as you anyway if you're familiar with the game you'll see that I've added some belts and holsters and basically I have done a whole bunch of stuff and Frankie got into the mix and did his thing with her arms and so now I'm gonna have to redo her UVW unwrap almost the whole model. I've already done the arms. Her head hasn't been touched, so it actually I changed her hair. That's right, I forgot that. So, I am if her boots, which are separate parts as you can see here, they've actually detached. They're each a separate object in the scenes. If they were identical, I would just do one UVW unwrap it and then I'd mirror the other transform it, flip the triang or the polys and then I would have my UVW unwrap already done on it. And if I wanted two separate maps so that I had asymmetrical skins, I would just separate it in the edit window. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to start with all. The nice thing I can do in Max is I can grab all of her lower body. I could also include the holster and the straps, but let's say I just want to do legs on one map. I can grab those, go to my modifier list, and add a UVW unwrap to all three objects. I love this about, un about Max. Edit window. As you can see, look at the seams. A mess. I always turn my seams on so I can see where they are. This is all because I've cut this model and divided it up into different spots and then I put it back together again and and you can see the mess it's made in the UVW unwrap itself. I'm going to redo everything on this map. I'm not going to use the old, you can see where parts of the old were. I'm not going to use those. I'm going to go to mapping. Oh, first I have to select some. So I'm going to switch to polygon. Select everything. Go to mapping. Flatten map. This is really important. Uncheck these. Especially normalized clusters. Always do your flatten map full scale. If you have to undo something, if you don't like it, you can undo it and your scale is still the same. If you normalize it, what normalize means is it makes it fit within the little blue box here that's outlined on your checkerboard. And then everything's a different scale. Every piece that you un you flatten map is a different scale. So this way, if you have the boot done, but just decide you don't like your legs, you can un you can flatten map the legs again, start all over again, and won't affect the scale of your boot as long as you haven't changed the scale of anything. Now I'm a bit of a control freak, so I kind of like to do zero. This determines how many pieces are already stitched together when you say OK. In my case, I like none. <laughs> Now, that's probably looks pretty challenging, but I actually enjoy this. I'm a little insane. <laughs> so I'm going to grab a polygon on her leg near the center of the part of the skin I'm going to make. I'm going to stitch this and start forming the piece that will become the leg. Right now, I can't tell which way things are oriented. So to make life easier on myself, I'm going to use my very special checkerboard. It, which you can't see here because it's tiling too much, I'm going to change it to tiling. Right now it's tiling 10 times, which is what it will be once it's mapped, but until I get it mapped, that's too much, so bring it down to one. Yeah. In each direction, just one times for now. Yes, did it change? Yes. The advantage of this is now I can see which direction everything is facing. I can tell if something is reversed, if it's upside down. I know where my orientation is. So I can see that this one here, the one I've got selected, is sideways, which we can, and I just, 
I want to do this so it's the right way around, I'll rotate it. And I've got it upside down. <laughs> so I'll rotate it the other way. That's why I have the numbers on there. So you can tell whether you've got it upside down or whether you've got it reversed. And it's not reversed. It's now the right way up. That's a nice way to skin. It just makes life easier. Switch to edges. Now stitch across. And you can see where your seam is. That's actually all I'm going to stitch because that's where I'm going to have a seam on the side of the leg. And I'm going to stitch across. Now I've got, as you can see, okay, that's the full width. That's where I want my seam. So now I'm going to go up until I get to the end of the skin. I'm going to zoom in so that it's a little easier to see. A little easier for me to handle the mouse too. This part I may just pause because <laughs> it's going to get really boring. And it's really hard for me to select new mouse. Then I stitch and stitch. And then the next. And then notice that when I go up, I go up before I start stitching sideways. And I get one row done and then stitch sideways. Sometimes it works better if you do the other way around. Sometimes it's better if, well, the deck here is kind of weird because we're getting diagonal seams. So in this case, I'm going sideways instead of clicking on this and doing up. It moved just now, so I'll undo that. I just made you say, oh, I don't like that, so I'll undo it. And I'll just use this edge instead and stitch. Hmm. Let's see how that stitches together. Not too bad. And I experiment like this. Let's see how this side stitches together. And then I decide which one stitched better, which one has the least amount of distortion. That's pretty good. I think I'm going to leave that. And I'll stitch that together. Now, let's see. Am I at the top? Not quite. And I actually like doing this. Now I'm, thinking, I'm pretty sure I'm at the top. I'll just grab the top edge. And what's it done is grab that, which is our cap on top of this leg. So I'm going to go down and I'll stitch down. And you get the idea. We're starting to see what you'd expect to see for a skin of a leg. We're at the knee joint now. I need elevator music for you while I'm doing stuff like that. I got a little bit further to go. And I'm finished. So there, that looks like, looks typical. And now, I will go back. I'll do the, let's do the back of her leg. I'm going to decide to grab a polygon, go back into polygon mode, choose a polygon somewhere. I like to get close to the center of where I'm going, you know, the center of this, the piece I'm going to put together. It just seems to go together better. You get fewer distortions and stuff when you do it that way. So I'm going to just stop recording now make this part one. You know, you can see what I'm doing. I'll get some more pieces done and I will come back. I've done a little bit more stitching and now I've gotten to an interesting part on the back of her leg that gets a little weird when you stitch this together. This is where you have to decide which is worse. You notice that really crosses really bad. I'm getting going to have a lot of distortion when I 
stitch these together. By the way, I'm using the stitch command. I have a shortcut key programmed to it. When I select one edge and hit stitch, it will do them to the center between the two. It doesn't, it's unlike target weld or something where you bring it over to one edge. No, this does it right in between the two, equal distance. So when I hit stitch, you can see it do that. And I select this one. This might end up, oops, I did D instead of S. This might be okay. But I want to see how it is the other way. So I'm going to do all that. It's quite a bit in. You may not be able to do anything about that kind of distortion. So I'm going to go find the piece that that's attached to. There it is there. You can tell because the part that was going to stitch is blue. The edge that would have stitched. And instead of attaching it there, instead of stitching there, I'm going to stitch its sides. Now it's oriented the wrong way and I'll fix that once I stitch it together if I can just select the edges. Okay. That's it. Now, which way is this thing facing? Let's just check. See where it is? It's the back of the calf and that's why it's a bit difficult. So I'm going to turn it the right way around. Hopefully this is right. No, it's upside down. Of course, I knew that was going to be the case because, of course, the bottom of the calf is wider than the top. And that's why this is really difficult to stitch together. Now, you can see this isn't going to stitch nicely. You really... I'm probably better off with it the first way. And that's how I do this. I will go back and forth if I'm not happy with something. And after a while, you get to know. And you don't experiment anymore. And I would just do it the way I knew was going to work best. See, I don't like that. I'm not going to stitch that together. But I wanted you to see what would happen if I had tried. I could try doing it this way and do it all at once. And that's not too bad. In fact, actually, that worked quite well. So I think I'm going to keep it that way. I think that did a pretty good job. We only got a little bit of distortion here and here all through. It kind of evened it out quite nicely. So if I got the bottom, I think I have. Oops. No. When you come to the end of a piece and you hit stitch... Max just doesn't do anything unless that way you know you've gotten to the edge. Double check this stitch. Ah, oh, there's still some pieces up here that haven't been stitched yet. Unfortunately for you, you can't hear Lady Gaga in my head. <laughs> Bad romance, by the way. Ah, we are at the end. So, that's the back of this leg. As you can see, these are blue, so you know that those two pieces go together. Now, if I didn't like this, I'd have no problem undoing it, either leg, and redoing it. And my scale, as you can see, has not changed. So I can I can redo it as often as I need to. If I suddenly decide, oh, I hate that, I don't like the way that's shaped, and, or I don't like the where I put the seam, I should have put the seam somewhere else, I can easily undo it and then do a new seam. So I'll do some more work, get the other side done, and I'll come back. I've done a little bit more. I'll actually show you what else I've gotten done. See, I've got the other leg front done. I'm working on the back leg now. And I've come upon a mitered corner 
you may as well think of it that way. It reminds me of sewing so much. It's amazing. And right here, I've got an edge highlighted. Now, you can see I've got this is going to be a seam. This is probably the inside of the leg. And you're going to have a piece that, depending, like, I mean, if I stitch this, which I normally go up, that's going to be a horrible distortion if I let these two sides stitch. It's going to be, you know, that's unacceptable. So I wanted to show you how nicely it works out sometimes if you go sideways and stitch it that way instead. Now we have a pretty reasonable mitered seam that we're going to stitch together. And that's a lot closer than the other way would have been. I'll get these stitched. Most of the time, stitching your edges together like this works beautifully. Sometimes you get things that just will not stitch together. And if you hit one of those, you, what you sometimes will get is um, something. If I select a bunch of these, I'll get something really weird happening. And, oops. Other times, you'll get something stretching from over here to here if you select, just select an edge. Sometimes it just does not, it's connected in a weird way in the model. And so it won't stitch nicely for you. So in that case, you have to move the piece that you want to stitch over to the spot where you want to stitch it. Get it lined up as closely as you can and then Go to vertex mode, select your vertices, and weld them together. Not stitch. In this case, you would weld them. That's what I do when I run into a real problem spot. So I will continue working, and when I think of something else I want to tell you, I will come back, and I will let you know what it is. I want to show you how being in this full-scale mode helps you if you decide that you want to change how you've done something. Do you know how big we are? There's the little blue box that represents your texture. And I've stitched these by going straight down the way I said I didn't want to last time. But let's say you get here and you saved it this way. You can't undo it. Well, what you do, select them, use control break to break them off, control B for break. It's a shortcut. And now I've broken them off from the other part of the uh, UVW unwrap, and I'm going to flat map again. And so I can go here, set this back on zero, uncheck everything, click OK. It's now redone it. It's all back to being all the same size pieces and shapes that it was before. So now I can go and find the one. I want to go back to edge mode. Select that. It's just a quick way to find the one that you want. There it is, sitting there. I'll grab it, move it down. And I'm going to do it the way I did the other, so it comes out like that. So I will... I can now... And I don't have to do the rotation, the orientation right now. I don't have to change it from that to do this. I just do that that way because it's just easier for me to say, see. But you could easily go and just stitch it together this way with your seams lining up. And I need to stitch this side one more time. Right, see the change over here? You can see where the seams are now. I love this about Max. I know exactly what's going on. I don't even have to turn it at this point. I can go like this and select this edge as well. That worked really well when I did last time. It will flip it itself. And then I'll stitch it and stitch it. Now, sometimes it's actually a mirror image of the way you've already stitched stuff together, if it's mirrored, it will stitch backwards. And you will have to change its orientation before you stitch it to other things that are no longer mirrored. Like if you've taken part of it and got it together properly and you've unmirrored it, and you've hit a piece that's mirrored, 
you have to change it, rotate it, use the mirror tools and um, fix it and then it'll stitch properly. Otherwise you get them, it'll overlap instead because it'll be on there reversed. Okay, I will be back. I want to show you a little trick that you might not know about this when you're stitching. You see I've already got a row stitched across the top. It's the underside of the last strap on the right boot under here. And I don't have to zoom in and try and stitch this together. I can ignore that and I can then stitch on the next ones. And then I have a little shortcut. I only need to stitch those ones for all of them to be stitched. You'll see that's now stitched. That saves you a lot of time. So I'm going to continue doing that and get back to you later. Sometimes when you are stitching together, even though I've done flatten mapping at zero, you get this. This is right this edge under this strap. Right? That's hard to show you, but it's this right under here. That. Even though I told it to flatten map at zero, Max has stitched those pieces together. And that is not what you want. So, find that piece. Where is it? Ah, there it is. See the blue? Now switch into poly mode and using the break, control B, break each part of do every second one. Sometimes that will save you a little bit of time and it will break all of them. But sometimes it doesn't. Let's see if this did this time. I do this to make darn good and sure they're all broken. Yes. Okay. So now we can go back. I'm doing the um, other boot. I have one boot completely done. I'll show you the pieces for it. There's the upper boot, and this is the lower boot without the sole. The sole is a separate piece. Right here is the sole. Just easier to deal with this seam along here than trying to deal with the distortion that would be caused if I actually stitched this part of the boot onto the upper. It's just it's an ugly, ugly mess, and you'd have lots of distortion. Better off with just the uh, seam there. So switch back into edge and stitch away. And I always like to start in the center. If you've noticed that, I do that. It just helps reduce that distortion. Yeah, wrong one. There we go. And stitch. And you get the idea. You have a nice piece when I'm finished. And you'll be able to stitch the rest of the bottom of the boot on to here. The straps. There's a, this boot is different than the other one. And the straps... Is, there's two straps down by the ankle, and I will break it right under this strap. And then this part down here, the lower boot, will be a different piece on the UVW unwrap, just like on the other boot. In fact, these two will be identical to each other or close enough, I will actually put them on top of each other and mirror it so that uh, it saves a little bit of space because they don't need to be different from each other unlike the uppers. So I will continue on this and do another video when I hit something else I want to show you. I'm doing the boot and I want to just show you something that I've run into here and how to correct it. So right now I've got, I'll just select these and show you. I started with this poly right here and then I stitched that one and then I've worked across until I came to the edge of the sole. I'm not including the edge of the sole. That's going with the side of the sole. This 
part up in here. So when I hit there, I stop. Now I've you can see how much I've actually got stitched together. And I ran into a problem when I tried to stitch this to this. These polygons right here gave me trouble. Watch what happens when I try to stitch this. That edge there does something kind of funny there. You know, you expect this big triangle to stitch to it. So that tells me there's something wrong in the model. Hmm, what's going on? You get something like this, stop, and... Check your model, because what's probably happened is you have some vertices that are not welded, and you have extra pieces. So let's find out what's happened to this one. I'm going to close that. I'm going to collapse this. And then I'm going to select only this model. And go into vertex mode, and let's have a look. What has happened here? At this point, to make life a little easier, I'm going to hide everything that's not selected. And I'm going to go in. I suspect there's something not properly welded, so I'm going to go in and use this. Hmm, that wasn't it. Go here and... So, what is the problem? Ah, I see it. See this? There's two edges there that shouldn't be there. There's got to be a vertex that's not welded. There we go. It welded it. I'm not one vertex fewer than what I had when I started. So, yep. That should solve the problem. I'll just go here and double check. No difference. I'll double check right here. No difference. That was it. That was our problem. We can go back to UVW unwrapping. Yep. And just click clamp. K on that, and I'll back out, unhide everything, select everybody again, and apply a UVW unwrap again. And we'll just see if it fixed the problem or not. Oh no, where's the map? Oh wait, we have to come out. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Go back into edge mode. Let's get in a little closer so you can actually see. And stitch. And look, it stitches together properly, the way you would expect. Doing this part of the boot is a little tricky. You have to really watch what happens when you stitch pieces together. I'm going to end up with one seam at the back. I'm doing the lower part of the boot, and I've just met right here. My central seam will be right there. And the phone rings, so I'll be back later. This is the knife's holster. I've already stitched some of it together. Right now what I've got stitched is the side of it, when you're looking at the player from the side, the side you can see, plus the front three polys and the back three polys. Now I want to stitch the other side of it onto here, and I want to seam down the center back of that rather than along the front edge or the back edge that it's visible. So I'm going to stitch it together. And it already had all of those four, uh, six polys stitched together because I did a flattened map on this at 45 degrees and allowed it to stitch some things together first. So I have to break these parts apart. And I stitch that side to it. And I've broken apart some of it. So now I'm going to stitch those pieces to the other side. Now my seam is down the center back, not very visible at all. I mean, you'd have to be in a really weird position to be able to see that seam. Now I'm going to continue stitching the top and the bottom 
to it. See, it's got the bottom already stitched to the two parts. It's got two polygons for the very bottom. I don't like it like that. I'm going to break it and then stitch it the way I want it stitched. And the same will happen with the top. I broke it, and I'm stitching it the way I want it. So there, that's the holster for the knife, UVW Unwrapped. Okay, I've actually added the belt, the holster, the straps, and the knife's holster to the uh, UVW Unwrapped, to the same map. I should have done them all at the same time, so the scale would be exactly the same instead. I've just eyeballed the scale, as you can see by my checker, that it's pretty easy to tell how close it is, and these parts don't have to be exactly the same as the legs, since it is, you know, it's going to be a different material. As you can see, I've packed them in by having some pieces turn differently than other pieces. That doesn't matter with something like this especially. You don't have to keep everything oriented the correct way. Some things can be upside down, like these two pieces. They fit nicely into each other with one piece upside down. Same with over here. So this is a pretty good packing of the UVW maps for each piece. It um, This is the knife here. This is part of the holster. This is the actual top of the holster. So you get an idea. You don't have to group things together. You can have this is the belt. This is one strap, this is the other strap. These could have been anywhere in the map that I wanted them. It doesn't matter. It's like there's the top of the boot and the sole of the boot. So now I'm ready to get my UVW map so that I can actually skin. So I'm going to go here and do Render UVW Template. Click on that. I've changed the size to the size I like, 1024 by 1024 and render UVW template. And there it is. I'm going to save that, and that is what I will use to skin.